Okay, so it is six o'clock. Um, don't stand up yet. I'm going to call the meeting to order, but before we start, I would like to take a minute of silence for our friends and our fallen in Burnsville um, Police Department and Fire Department. Okay, now we can stand for Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, guys. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, any changes to the agenda? Uh, yes, Madam Acting Mayor. Um, we have... Uh, two items. Uh, the first item is under presentations, proclamations, and acknowledgments to add item 4A, which would be a declaration of school bus driver day. And then also uh, item of note, um, there is a correction under item 6C on the consent agenda, the date on the waiving of monetary limits on municipal tort liability form. Uh, had the, there was a typo in the year, we've made that correction. Perfect. Thank you. Motion to approve as amended. Second. Motion by Berg, seconded by uh, Novak. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Okay. Presentations, proclamations, and acknowledgments. I'm going to read the State of Minnesota proclamation for the School Bus Driver Appreciation Day, which was yesterday. Um, so this is from our governor, uh, Tim Walls. Whereas, through frigid winters and hot sunny days across dirt roads and multi-lane highways, from the early morning to the late at night, Minnesota school bus drivers safely transport over 682,000 students to and from school and activities. And whereas, Minnesota school bus drivers provide an incredible service to our students and communities. They are each responsible for the safety of dozens of children, and support the success of our students and their families. And whereas Minnesota's school bus drivers play a crucial role in our school systems and are important figures in children's lives, often bookending a student's day at school. Their safe and timely services positively influence students' educational experience. And whereas, thanks to the rigorous safety standards for bus drivers, and their vehicles, students are nearly eight times safer riding to and from school in a school bus than in cars. And whereas the school bus system is the largest form of mass transit in Minnesota, school buses have reduced their environmental impact by using alternative fuels and retrofit diesel engines. And whereas School districts throughout Minnesota are seeking dedicated professionals to serve in these fulfilling roles. And whereas Minnesota appreciates school bus drivers and recognizes the invaluable contributions they make to public education and student safety. Today we recognize these worthy professionals. Now therefore, I, Tim Walls, Governor of Minnesota, do hereby proclaim Wednesday, February 21st, 24, as School Bus Driver Appreciation Day. Is that all I have to do? Okay. All right, do we have anyone here for public comment on anything that is not currently on the agenda? Okay. Um, any changes to consent agenda? Does anybody want to pull anything off? Talk about it. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Berg. Second by Stiles. Did I pronounce that right? Right. Yes. Okay. Yep. All in favor? Official. Aye. Aye. Approved. All right. Uh, no public hearings. On to general business. This DNS pedal tractor pulls agreement. So this is an agreement uh, 
for DNS pedal tractor pulls to provide the pedal tractor pull event at the upcoming fire rescue days. Um, the reason that we just don't have it on consent agenda is that there is a liability issue associated with this that given the nature of how this is set up, there is some increased liability for this. Um, one, while the Lions are happy to man it and happy to reimburse us for the cost of it and essentially sponsor it, um, they uh, do not want to actually have the contract with the vendor, so they want to run it through the city. Um, and that does put the city in the position of increased um, liability. Um, and so we want to make sure that the council is aware of that if and when they want to approve the agreement. And I will leave it to the city attorney to expand on what that might be. Uh, so this uh, entity is not te technically an entity. It's uh, individuals that have that as their name and then provide the equipment. Um, they had indicated that they might have insurance, but I don't know if we ever clarified that, and there isn't any insurance that's covered, covering the city. Um, the risk here is relatively low. As my understanding after talking with Linda is that we're talking about big kit equipment, a little kit equipment that is not likely to provide any great injuries. So, and you are covered by the uh, League of Minnesota Cities Insurance Trust for park and rec sort of injuries that might occur, as are your volunteers, the Lions volunteers. So, okay. do we have to? If you want to move it? forward, you just simply need to pass a motion to approve the DNS pedal tractor pulls agreement. So moved. Second. Motion by Novak, second by Berg. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, administration, fourth quarter financial reports. Does the council have any questions with regards to the fourth quarter financial reports? Keep in mind that while it's the fourth quarter report, there's still additional adjustments that need to be done as part of the year-end activity that do not show up in the report. Anything major to note, to share, no? Okay, Public Works. Corey, good to see you. Nice to see you guys too. <laughs> um, well, we're saving on our SALT budget. <laughs> uh, Gas budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah we're, we're saving on a lot right now, um, which puts us into doing a lot of random stuff, inside work. Um, the hard part is right now, you can't, it's not spring, so you can't start spring stuff. So. A lot of painting, some well house work, a lot of tree trimming, um, kind of monotonous work, but that's what we have to do right now. So hopefully, I mean, hopefully it stays this way. But other than that, that's all I got. How are you guys coming along on um, cleaning up the ponds? Pretty good. Uh, the only problem is now the ground really isn't frozen. So where before you could track in there and not do any damage, now you really can't. So kind of limited to staying around um, shoulders and stuff like that but if the ground is frozen in the morning we can go out but if it's not then we can't okay it looks so, nice yeah mm -hmm. they've got uh, the we burnt piles um, what yesterday and the day before got a burning permit and did that and then our wood chip piles massive they've cut more trees this winter than and it's stuff that hadn't been done in 15 years wow. so nice well, yep. are those wood good. chips going they just sit there are they going to go to use? Is there? I mean, do we have an opportunity to do anything with them? Uh, you can put them around trees, but the thing is right now with all the emerald ash borer stuff going on, mm -hmm. um, my son works for the city of Farmington. They have 3,500 boulevard trees they have to take down. So oh. getting rid of trees and stuff right now, there's an abundance of them. So I uh, know they just pile up and they'll decompose and turn into black dirt. So that's all I got. Maybe this is a stupid question, um, but is there what's the difference between what your guys are doing around the ponds versus what we've talked about with some homeowners going around ponds and clearing out stuff that we don't want them to do? If there's a misunderstanding, so, so really, you're you're not supposed to remove vegetation in the wetland pond buffer area. So what what people do is they'll mow right down to the water, and then basically nothing gets filtered out anymore. Where what we're doing is we're taking out basically weeds that have grown into trees that, you know, 
we couldn't go in and mow around there. Like when we mow it, we'll mow it, you know, six, eight inches tall once or twice a year. Where what people do, they just extend their backyard so then they so basically their yard's bigger. And if you continue to mow it at three inches for five years, it looks like nice grass five years down the road. So it's also inviting to waterfall, which we, we don't want. So. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, before what we typically did is just maintained around the inlets and outlets because that's all we could really do. But then when you had, you know, a, wi a winter or fall with, that was basically dry and then no snow and then the ground froze, you can get into areas that you couldn't before. And I had a lot of people, there was a couple of complaints at first, like why are you taking down so many trees? And then when you explained, then, then they understand it. And then I'd get multiple calls like, hey, are you going to come over here? Are you going to come over here? And it's, we can only, I mean, once the ground wasn't frozen, I'm not going to go track in somebody's backyard and make a mess. If there's six inches of snow and the ground's frozen, great. I mean, we have a tree over in, um, off of uh, Weston Court and Sterling Court, massive elm that's dead that we can't get at. We we're going to drop it over a pond and then drag it out on the other side, but the ground's not frozen. Thank you. Um, anything more from the police department? <clears throat> um, no. Okay. Engineering. I have no report, but I am happy to answer any questions anybody might have. Anybody? Please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Got nothing. Right. Community development. Uh, nothing beyond the the minutes that were provided. <laughs> Any questions on the minutes? From, no? no. Parks Department. Uh, nothing specific. Okay. Um, CCEC. We met on Tuesday. Um, egg hunt is coming up at the end of March. If anyone has any volunteer groups that they think might want to come and help, please let Linda know. <laughs> Just task her with more things. Um, other than that, that's, that's what I got. Um, scale is the it we have not had a recent um, service or excuse me executive committee meeting um, or general membership meeting and uh, service delivery is actually on Monday okay and then I-35 that'll be in a couple weeks the seventh okay. anybody have anything for a discussion by council I have one small thing I would like to bring up. Um, do you want to end with that, or do you want me to bring up my little small thing? Oh, you go ahead. Uh, well, it's just a small thing, too, so. Go ahead. Um, paper, scissors. Well, yeah. No, I was just going to give a heads up, and I've been mentioning this, too. So um, we have a hearing, or I've been working on a bill with ARM, which is a Disability Provider Association that I'm on the board of, and we are um, going to be looking to exempt uh, or preempt or take away local control uh, from cities to be able to do rental licenses of group homes. Um, there's been a lot of issues uh, in other cities, so uh, we have language introduced, uh, and we have our first hearing on Monday that I will be testifying in support of. I may or may not be wearing my city shirt, uh, but I'm not repre there representing the city other than the fact we don't have a rental licensing ordinance, uh, so I can say that, um, but I will be representing the providers that I work with and support, so just giving everybody the heads up, it's at 1 o'clock on Monday, um, so... Did you need us there to support you? No, I mean, I mean, you're welcome to come on down. And, and but you know, I know Tom had asked you to. Was I looking for a letter of support from the city? I don't think we need to do anything like that. You know, we've talked with Metro Cities and League of Minnesota Cities, and you know, they're going to oppose it just on principle of uh, not preempting anything from local control. So uh, we'll see how the hearing goes, um, okay. and then more to come because it'll go to state and local government after that, and there'll be multiple stops. So right. it should be fun. And just, Josh, it's my understanding that a lot of cities that do have rental ordinances actually exempt exempt these types of facilities anyways. And I, in discussions internally in staff, we if we were to have such an ordinance, we probably would as well. Right. And, that, and that's kind of the, the thought behind this is a, all of these settings are licensed by DHS and the state or MDH 
yeah, licensed by her, um, <laughs> and uh, and then have county oversight as well. So they're inspected annually. They have folks in there. I mean, there's if cock around the toilet is off, we get cited for that. I mean, so it's like they're detailed and they do a great job. Um, so adding another layer of city bureaucracy and oversight really is somewhat meaningless. And that's the, some of the cities in the Metro that I've pulled and reached out to um, that they say, well, we don't need to do that. Somebody else is doing that. We can turn our attention and resources elsewhere. So they specifically exempt it in their ordinances when they do have uh, rental licenses. I would say, um, I don't know if it's a majority or not. A lot of cities don't even have rental licensing anyway. So it's either they don't have it at all, or if they do have it, a good portion of them also exempt it. So then there's still that, I mean, there's a small pocket of them that do enforce. And I would go out on a limb to say those are probably some of the problem cities that are doing it. Um, and the league and metro cities won't support some of the practices that they're doing. And I saw Andrea's hand go to her microphone. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I, was, I was just curious if you knew of cities that were actually licensing these entities. I, all the cities that I've worked with on rental housing licenses yeah. have exempted those entities. Yeah, I mean, so uh, West St. Paul is a good example. New Hope, uh, they're the ones that got in trouble, I guess I can say. They, uh, they revoked rental licenses of some group homes uh, for nuisance police calls, or what they defined as nuisance police calls, um, and that got into the news last summer. Uh, that's kind of what prompted some of this, and now we're learning that other cities are doing that as well. We've gotten around the whole zone amount of the town, so people know not to zone out uh, these types of places, but now they're using the rental license as kind of that ticket in or the ticket to get them out. So um, most cities, though, I would say most cities don't understand who licenses what, so a lot will say licensed by the Department of Health, even though it's a DHS licensed uh, facility or something like that. Um, so there might be some cleanup in the future to educate cities on that, so. Admittedly, the statutes are complicated yeah. and not super clear on those topics, so I don't see them changing anytime soon. <laughs> Is this a separate bill, Josh, or is this tied into some of the other bills that are? It is very separate from all the okay, other good. zoning things, and this is not, it, even the title of the bill, though, says something about zoning. It's not zoning, it's rental licensing only, um, and it's exempting those that are actively utilizing their license, too, so it's not just, you know, not serving any clients, so there's active reasons for the state or the county, the lead agency, to be overseeing them and inspecting them, so um, we tried to cover as much as we could without putting cities in a bad spot, obviously, so. Okay, because I'm in full support of that, but there are some other things out there yeah. right now that sound kind of similar that I'm not, so. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, good luck. Um, so what my issue or discussion is, um, wondering, unfortunately, we have to think about this because of what has happened in Burnsall. Um, what uh, are we as a city wanting to do? Have we done in the past? Is it possible for us to put on the scrolling out there? Um, we honor our fallen uh, Burnsville PD Fire Department. Can we put that up there? Tom, can you enlighten us a little bit of what we have done to, for, to show our support as Elko New Market to our local communities? Yep. Um, so if you guys will give me a little latitude on this, uh, first let me say that Elko New Market is a close neighbor of Burnsville, mm -hmm. um, and members of our organization have personal relationships with, you know, City of Burnsville elected and, and staff. And additionally, we have a number of residents who are in law enforcement and the full-time fire service. I think we may have a disproportionate number of people who match that, including some that work for the city of Burnsville in both the police department and the fire department. So that incident um, goes without saying that it hits close to home. After so the council's aware is after I became aware of the incident involving the deaths of the two police officers and the firefighter, I contacted both public safety chiefs, the assistant fire chief and the police sergeant advising them that they were authorized to undertake any measures they felt were appropriate to support our sister city and their brothers and sisters in the public safety field. Um, in these circumstances, I believe it's best to let public safety personnel and those departments take the lead on what they feel is appropriate and the best manner in which to honor the fallen, be of assistance, and express support. Um, I've personally communicated with the city of Burnsville city administrator. Um, he communicated that he was 
he was uh, he expressed gratitude for what we had done already, and he was aware of what we had done already. Um, they they took notice of that and indicated that he would contact us if they needed anything else. Um, to date, our public safety departments have or will be taking the following actions on Monday, concurrent with the governor's order to place the flags at half mast. Um, some of you may have seen it. They pulled out the ladder truck and put up the big flag. We also had two trucks go up to Shakopee and they parked on the Marystown Bridge along Highway 69 for the procession that day. Um, on Tuesday afternoon, the department did miss a procession that occurred that day because the department didn't get the notice until like an hour and 45 minutes before the event and they just simply couldn't pull something together. I need to note that within the fire service in the metro area, there does appear to be some communication issues with getting stuff out. They're actually finding out through other means than through the fire service that some of the stuff is going on and getting details. So we're trying to do our best. Um, I should also note that on Tuesday night, the fire department collected donations and half a dozen firefighters delivered food to both Burnsville Fire Department stations, both Savage Fire Department stations, and Dakota County Dispatch took the calls. Um, the department plans to have a truck on at the convoy event on Saturday look online this should be just an event to see just the sheer number of fire trucks um, that are going to be rolling on that the fire department also plans to have a truck and personnel at the funeral on the 28th um, it should also um, be noted that our police department's doing stuff as well um, as usual when you have a Minnesota officer fall they have the shrouds on their badges which is standard and commonplace in most police departments um, all of our squads, uh, the service counter at the police department, as well as the case up in the vestibule, if you haven't noticed, um, are displaying the Burnsville Police Department and Fire Department patches, patches with the thin blue line and red lines through them. And the police department plans to send a squad and an officer to the funeral on Wednesday as well. Um, when these things come up, our approach is simply not the virtue signal, just do it because everybody else is do it, but we want to honor the fallen in a manner that's consistent and expected within the public safety field and we provide meaningful support where we can. And speaking with the fire department and police department personnel regarding what they've done, um, I had relayed that we had been contacted at the city by an individual who felt we weren't doing enough. When they were surprised, and I think maybe a little offended at the suggestion that we weren't doing anything or doing enough for it. Um, this morning, I know we received a call, um, at least one call, maybe two at City Hall, and council members have been contacted by members of the public expressing concerns that we're not doing anything or doing enough as a city uh, to support the City of Burnsville and their public safety departments following the recent deaths of their personnel. Uh, this was in least at part putting something on the electronic sign in front of City Hall. So just so the council's aware, our current sign content policy does not provide for memorials or other content for this type of circumstance. Um, I do believe it's fair to note that in the 20 years the city has owned the sign, there has never been a request for or a criticism of not having sign content of that nature on the sign, even though in that 20 year period there have been numerous deaths of public safety personnel in the line of duty. In short, in two decades it's never come up and there's never been a criticism for it. But we can always change that policy if you want to do something now. So if the council wants to have a message in support um, placed on the sign, staff would be happy to make that happen first thing tomorrow morning to be displayed until after the funeral. And if the council uh, wants to direct it now as a one-off, we then as staff can, can prepare an amendment to our sign content policy so we have guidance when this comes up in the future. I like that idea, but I don't know if I like it being a one-off. I feel like maybe we should make some sort of well, that would be that would, they would go back and make right. a change. To we don't have a policy tonight to right. adopt, so you guys can provide an exception for the policy for right now, and then we would amend the policy. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes, do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It it will be so. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Are we going to make plans then to talk about amending the policy that way we can be consistent in the future? They will go ahead and draft something and bring yep. it back to council Perfect. to approve. Yep. It'll likely be on a future consent agenda. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Do you yes. need a motion to skirt around the policy? <laughs> no, I think direction is sufficient for something like this. I wanted to do a motion of nothing and then a motion to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Once again, last time it was a motion for nothing. Does anybody else have anything else to say? Um, 
real quick, Jody, do you have the sample with you of the banner? I do. Awesome. Can you oh, fun. show oh, us? I happen to have it in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys had this in, I, did you get it in your packets? No? Okay. So this is the um, military banner that was on the consent That's agenda. Cool. This is Molly Mahold. Um, you guys want to pass it in? Okay. Um, so we talked to her family and asked if we could use her as our example. Um, so that's, that's where that came from. For those of you that don't know, she, she and her family lived just outside of town and she was killed a few years back. Um, but they're a big, big support here in town and, and a great family. It looks nice. So thank you that. for allowing us to do this. We're really, really excited to be able to bring this to town. Thank you for you guys putting it together. Uh, I think yeah. it's awesome. It's a great idea. Thanks. Anybody else have anything they want to say or motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn by Berg, second by Novak. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting closes at 626.